we're here. <laughs> we've turned up. We we could have we could have gone home, but we'll turn up and, and do the fan cam for yeah. you. Um, so Villa one, Crystal Palace two. Pretty much the lineup that we thought it was going to yeah. be. Like we, <laughs> when, when you're at the game and and you're watching the team, you know, you, and you see what's happening and you see some of the performances and you just think, oh, it was just frustrating. Like, I think what I will say is that I think if Eze and Wharton had stayed on the pitch, it would have been a very very long night. I think when they went off. It enabled us to probably grow into it a little bit more. And then I felt like we st we started to do OK. We, the first half, towards the end, we started to get a real grip on it. We, were, we had them camped around their box. And I went in at half-time thinking, we, 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 we were the better team, and if we carry on, we'll do well. Two things that I'll say as well. I have really, really missed Tyro Mings' <laughs> recovery runs. And I have really, really missed Bubakar Kamara's recovery tackles because the biggest thing about tonight, I think, is that both of those played 90 minutes. So that is the big positive and it will lead us on later on in the season for them to potentially get more and more minutes. So that's a big standout for me. Um, I'll, you can have, I'll let you do your okay. thing in a minute. Um, <laughs> And then I think second half, it was a bit bitty, a bit scrappy. We give the ball away at the edge of the box. And I was watching, you was behind the dugout, but I was yeah. watching Emery. Moments before when Brendia lost the ball, Brendia went down and Unai was calling for calm, wasn't he? Yeah. And the same thing happened again, that happened at the weekend. We started to lose our way. We lost our calmness. And then the momentum shifted and they were able to score that goal. So... I'm, I'm disappointed tonight in the sense that we've gone out the cup when we've got a really good opportunity. But then, on the flip side, I can't be disappointed because we've played our B team against Palace's best team and we've gone out. So, it feels, it feels like a bit like that to me. And I feel like, as well, a couple of players that potentially had an opportunity to really put their stamp on... Unai's thought process hasn't done it. Philogene didn't do it and Buendia didn't do it. Those two for me, and I know Buendia's coming back from injury and that's fair enough, but you've got an opportunity tonight to, to like get in Unai's thought. I'm not saying play well and get the shirt. I'm saying play well and just give us that little bit of like, bloody hell, he's back now. But I don't think he did it. I thought Bailey was better. I thought Bailey was, you know, getting on it and, and beating a man and, and he put that ball in for, for the equaliser. So I think there's signs of Bailey getting better. But apart from that, I think Gauchi OK needs to come off his line a little bit quicker. And that's about it, really. <laughs> what, what's your thoughts, mate? I'm three minutes in, so... Uh, I think... I'm, I'm bitterly disappointed. I am bitterly disappointed. I, I want to win this cup. I want to win a trophy with Villa, and this is a really, really big opportunity to do well in a competition. And we've gone, albeit we've changed ten players, I think, from Saturday. So only really McGinn, I think, retained his place. There was ten. We had ten. I counted in the first half. Ten internationals playing tonight, and I don't think the performance was that of a, of ten internationals. I think we started really, really shakily. It looked, it looked like a team that hadn't played together and they hadn't gelled and they looked a little bit off it. Palace, obviously only making three changes, were looked the better side and that's natural. But I do agree with you. I felt we, we grew into the game in the first half and we got better and better and better. And once we scored, I think we were the only team that looked like they was going to go on and win the game. And I really fancied us in the second half. But the second half, we came out and we was really disappointing. We, we didn't really capitalise on what, what we were doing at the end of the first half. We lost possession. I mean, we've handed them two goals tonight by losing possession in, in poor areas. And that they've basically took the ball on and scored. I think I'm with you. I think players that had a real chance tonight to, to put a marker down and show the manager that they, that, he, that they should be in his thoughts coming off the bench could be game changers. I haven't done it, you know. Bidet's lost the ball far too many times. Buendia wasn't as influential as he could be. You know, we've got a brilliant number 10 in Rodgers. And I, you look at the squad and the only other natural number 10 is Buendia. And tonight it was his chance to say that he could come on and make the difference in that role. And he hasn't done it. He's, he, you know, he looked, he's looked tired. He's looked ineffective. He didn't 
do enough when he got on the ball. Bailey looked a little bit better. I was a bit disappointed in the Djalkovic. I think for an 18-year-old, he looks quite composed, but he gets on the ball and he cuts back inside. And he, he, he does, oh, I did think he played not, OK. He was OK, yeah, but he wasn't as positive as, as I'd like him to be. The positions he gets himself into and he receives the ball, he looks up the line and, and he, he tends to turn round. And whether that's a confidence thing, I don't know, but he's definitely got a lot of potential for an 18-year-old. Do you think a, a, a couple of them are, are doing this this year, though? Like, oh, like, you know, if I think of Bailey this season, he, he, he's not releasing the ball quick enough and his decision-making is not quick I enough. I genuinely think with Bailey it's a confidence thing. I think he needs, a, he needs a standout performance, he needs a goal, he needs to spark back into life again. And I think it'll come. I do. We've, we've seen enough of Bailey at his best to know that when it comes, he's a very, very good player. Some of the others, Bidais, you know, we brought him back. He had a brilliant season last season. Maybe he hasn't played enough to, to really establish himself in the team, but he gets chances. I mean, he was brilliant in the in the, in the European Cup, wasn't he? And you thought that was the standout yeah. performance that he was going to kick on from. And yet, every time we've seen him since, he's really flattered to deceive. But with you, I absolutely bloody adore Tyro Mings' mm. performance. Yeah. I thought, considering that bloke <laughs> hasn't played 90 minutes for nearly 18 months, he was absolutely yeah. brilliant in the air. He's like you say, he was good on the ball. You know, he, he looked a little bit in the first ten minutes. You can always is he a bit rusty, which he's going to be. But he grew into the game. To see him complete ninety minutes was wonderful, wonderful. And I agree with you also, Bubakar Kamara. That we know pass. he's a we know he's a phenomenal <laughs> footballer, don't we? It's yeah. a matter of getting minutes into those players' legs because those two, especially, are going to be huge for us yeah. from now to the end of the season. But overall, I am bitterly disappointed to go out of the cup tonight. It, you know, it's a competition we can definitely have done well in, and I want to win something. And, and I'm fed up with going out with a whimper <laughs> in these games. And with the team, in my opinion, that we put out tonight <laughs> at home, ten internationals, I think we should have done better. But luckily, our names on the FA Cup this year. So <laughs> no, Champions League. <laughs> well, and the Champions League. Yeah. No, but, I, but no, I think it's very difficult to analyse that game with the amount of changes, etc. And yeah. and to look at it and go. You know, how many changes we made? They, they played there pretty much their first they made three team. Changes, but the three changes that come in was Will Hughes, Eddie and Ketia. Yeah. And all right, the keeper <laughs> made his debut, but, you know, two really, really important Who was their keeper? Uh, they signed him from, I don't know. Like, like, I've read it before yeah. the game. They signed him from somewhere in the summer. But, um, yeah, I mean, so they made two outfield changes. But Eddie, and, Eddie and Ketia was their big yeah. signing in the summer. And Will Hughes is a really good signing. And, solid then, and then you think, we've, we, you know, we, we have li- we have, Unai has shown his hand here that, and showed where the priorities lie. I think he has. But, I mean, in the last round, he went very youth-orientated. But this round, he's played a pretty much senior side, albeit... I don't want to say reserve side or second string. I don't want to say that. We've the players that don't play regularly in the Premier League, and I think I, what, that's what I wanted to see tonight. And I, and I felt the team was good enough to win the game. And, and barring two really poor mistakes where we've gifted the possession away and they've capitalised on it, we had a good chance tonight. Yeah. But in the second half, we didn't do enough. We wasn't better, good enough on the ball going forward. We gave the ball lack away of movement too many as well. Times. Weren't I thought that when we real the lack, ball, there was a real there was no lack movement. of movement. Duran did okay, you know. <laughs> He's took his goal well. Has he done enough in his all-round game to, to, to oust Ollie Watkins? This is the big question for him. He's a brilliant. Yeah, no, player. I'd say he was okay. Yeah, you know. but Ollie Watkins is still for yeah. me our, our number one striker. Yeah. You know, when he gets these starts, I mean, he gets his goal. Great, that's what he's there for. But does he do enough in his all-round game to oust Ollie Watkins? Currently, no. Is he a fantastic all-round? You know, a, a impact striker. Yes. Can he nick you a goal? Yes. But. Ali Watkins is still number one striker for me at Villa, but he's pushing hard. There's, there's, there's positives with players coming back from fitness. So Mings, Kamara, brilliant. The rest, I think a lot of them will be sitting in that dressing room tonight thinking, I could have done a bit more. I could have really, really stamped and, and said to the manager, you know, I'm here, boss. I'm ready to go, boss. And I think... Well, yeah, because the, the thing season, is that, that there are going to be limited opportunities. They're not going to get because it, it, you know if you look at Nedeljkovic, he's not he's not no. really in the match day squad. When Diaz not coming off the bench, Bogard's not in the match day squad. So you I know think we've got a solid 16, 17 players now. We've got the eleven that start, and then you have got four or five that, that are the rotation players that, that come on start, come on start, and now you're adding in Mings and Kamara into that, which you know he's a very good six, a very strong 16, 17 players. After that. We've got players that if we had a real injury uh, crisis, then you'd be calling on them. And I think if we did have an injury crisis, I'd be a little bit worried of some of those players playing regularly week in, week out in the Premier League. They could do a job on the odd game, but 
I think some of them are going to be looking over the shoulders in the summer. Yeah, right, so we turned up, so make sure you're smashing the likes, <laughs> subscribe if you're new, comment your thoughts, up the villa. Up the villa.